Hey everyone, anyone who knows me knows I'm a big fan of conferences. In the next coming weeks, I'm going to be running our very own summit. It's called the Leverage and Growth Summit for Physicians, where I interview 35 plus physician entrepreneurs and hear the stories of how they created their ideal lives using the skills they've already attained as physicians. So I thought this would be an excellent time to share one of my favorite Leverage and Growth interviews of all time with the physician entrepreneur, Dr. Davil Banasali. If you like this episode, I encourage you to sign up at www.leverageandgrowth.com so you can be part of the summit this year. So get ready to be inspired. I know you're going to love this. So enjoy. Hey, everyone. This interview I've been waiting for to do for a while. I'm super excited to talk to Dr. Davil Banasali. Um, outside his practice, uh, well, first of all, he's a dermatologist. He's in New York City. But outside his practice, he does so many different things. Uh, he's built numerous uh, health tech companies like Skin Medicinals, uh, Hair Stim Labs, and Air Health. These are all dermatology companies. We're going to talk all about these things. He's got a bunch of different other skincare projects uh, on his plate, uh, including Fast Beauty Company, as well as a company called 86 Elm with Martha Stewart. He's had a lot of cool collaborations, uh, you know, but he's also well known. And and honestly, he's been decorated for his pro bono work and and all that he does for, you know, his community as well, particularly his alumni community at Michigan State. Um, I'm excited to talk to him today. Davo, how you doing? Great to see you, my friend. It's uh, long overdue. Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to talk to you because every time I do talk to you, there are new things going on. I can't keep up with you. I probably need to do these interviews every single month if that's the way it goes. <laughs> but hopefully I did you enough justice on the no, bio. But do you mind sharing a little bit about the things you do outside of your dermatology practice? Sure. Um, so I have different kind of um, different parts of my life. So part of it's skincare, as you mentioned. Um, we have, I don't know, four or five or six projects coming out in the next 16 to 18 months or so. Uh, Martha, uh, dear friend, amazing person. She's one of the projects for sure. We have another one that's coming out a little bit sooner uh, with somebody you guys probably will recognize. Uh, that's like the creative part of all of it. And we did that one with Amazon, obviously. Um, that's like for that one part of the brain that you just need to kind of like, you know, uh, again, get out that creativity, that, that, that different kind of uh, brush stroke, if you will. Um, on the tech side, again, we have SM. So Skin Medicinal, since we last spoke, has grown a bit. So SM, um, quick summary. We created a compounding platform because at least in Durham, drug pricing got out of hand on the generic side. So we are like, all right, let's figure out how we can use technology, kind of come together as a group of, uh, of uh, as a field and see what we can do. So we're now at 350,000 patients served, which is in the hymns roman territory. We have about 8,000 prescribers, uh, dermatologists on there. Uh, we've donated, I think, over $200,000 too. So whenever I do anything, I try to make some sort of social good part of it. Um, it's been really fun. We have scholarships for residents, things like that. Uh, we built something called hair stem separately. Hair stem was just me being obsessed with trying to figure out how to grow hair on people. Uh, that one is about 30,000 patients deep or something like that. I can't remember. Um, it's grown pretty well too. And I think 3000 offices or, or 2,500 offices, something like that. So those are on the tech side and air again, air is a whole different piece. That one is one. Uh, I hope actually other fields do the same thing. What we did is we brought all the doctor offices together, derm offices. We're like, Hey, can we get better deals from McKesson, Delasco? Can my gowns be cheaper? Can my lasers be cheaper? And so we kind of almost created a digital GPO, uh, which has been super fun. And then um, beyond that, I mean, other updates, we had that tattoo company, Ephemeral, which is tattoos that um, disappear after a year. That one's done really well. I think it just raised 20 million or something like that. Um, the cool part about that, which um, not completely public yet, but it should be soon, is that we're gonna be doing testing for radiation tattoos for cancer patients, which I think is super cool. Um, again, there's always like a social good part of everything I do. And like, that's one, you know, unfortunately, personally, you know, we have family members, things like that, which we, we've seen that process. And it's one of those things where um, it's kind of bringing the worlds together. Uh, and hopeful, you know, obviously on the aesthetic tattoo side, it's cool because you can have a tattoo and you can change your mind every year, have different tattoos. But on the personal like doctor side, um, I really think it'll help a lot of people because. As somebody who's removed tattoos for a living, um, it sucks. It's not a great treatment. It hurts like crazy. You can't get the tattoo completely gone without leaving a little bit of scar. And so it's going to hopefully be a fun little, um, you know, side project within that big project. So, um, no, we've been we've been a bit busy. And uh, then obviously my office is in New York. Um, we we try to do good, and I appreciate you. Yeah, we we try to do the right thing always and forever. Um, and my practice is like, it's my, it's my family. So my patients are my family. So we keep it very intimate. Um, and it's been a privilege, honestly, to be part of it. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating to see all the things you're able to juggle and do today. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think what I really want to know about and what a lot of people want to know about is kind of how this all started. I mean, you obviously 
did medical school, you went into training, you were a dermatologist. Like, was there any sort of inkling back then that you would venture into all of these different kind of entrepreneurial type uh, ventures? So, you know, and we, I think we spoke about this before. My big thing with doctors in general is we are more powerful than we realize. We are better equipped to solve problems than we realize. We're just kind of like beaten down to this idea that all we should do is focus right in front of us, right? Like right in front of us. You know, it's like even how we treat patients, like we follow these like algorithms in our head based on how everything is. I mean, one of my famous cases was a, was a little boy who, got, um, who was unfortunately attacked by a dog. You may have saw it on, um, it was all over the news. Um, during the pandemic, and he was told by his his doctors that you know you can't treat the scar for sixteen to sixteen or sorry sixteen months or eighteen months something crazy. And like this is like a six year old boy like you know no that's old paradigm new paradigm means you treat it as fast as possible. We treated him within weeks. We flew him in during the pandemic. I had to be very secretive because I was pretty sure I was going to get yelled at by God knows who. who but um, but you have to you have to do the right thing, right? And so we treated him. It wasn't for press or media, honestly, but um. You know, the family kind of asked us to share his results because I think they were getting a little bit of heat. But we treated them because that's what you're supposed to do. Not, again, what everybody keeps telling you, like, do this or do this. Like, we're, as doctors, again, we have the knowledge. You know, that's why I, I love evidence-based research, but sometimes the evidence doesn't exist. You have to create it, right? And so, you know, with this, the, the inkling for me was just, I always thought about, like, not just my patients in my rooms, but beyond my four walls, right? Like, how do I help those people? How do I serve? So with SM, We've served 350,000 patients. I wouldn't see that many patients in my career 10x, right? Like it just wouldn't happen. Um, and we have the resources. And again, like MBAs are great. And I have no issue with anybody who gets an MBA, but also you could hire an MBA, right? Like if, if my um, expertise is not in numbers or finance, which it isn't, I'm the worst business person ever because I don't look at numbers. I just build things, right? And I'm like honest about it, right? So I find people who can put like some sort of structure on things that I do um, but I like to educate myself and early in my career, and I think that kind of my advice for people who are watching this, hopefully is like, you, like scratch that itch. Like it's okay. Um, educate mm -hmm. yourself. I every kind of blog that's not medicine, right? I read the medicine stuff, but I like looking at like tech crunch or, you know, financial times or this, and just like, okay, so this company just got acquired. What do they do? What was their journey? Like, who are the founders? What skill sets do they have? Right. If I like the, I like the, like the, like the, this, this companies, because a lot of times companies have missteps too. And I have to learn it. Like, what do they learn? What do they do? You know, with us and SM, like I would have never thought it got that big, right? We were trying to figure out all this different stuff. And, you know, it's like you, you learn kind of baptism by fire, but it's in medicine, we're taught it has to be perfect from day one. Like we have to, like, we can't jump unless everything is aligned. That's not entrepreneurship. You have to jump and you figure it out on the way down. You're going to make mistakes. As long as you learn from them, you have a, kind of a positive mindset that it will get better, like it will get better. And, and so, you know, for me, I just always had that itch. I had to scratch it and clearly I do it way too much. And so, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's finding that balance. But I, mm -hmm. I, you know, again, I just, it's been one of those kind of fun trips. That's why I love what you're doing because, you know, this is kind of what I wish I watched early in my career too, because I was so scared, so much anxiety mm -hmm. around the idea of dipping a little bit into the water of a world I didn't know. Because in medicine, again, we're taught not to do that. And, you know, it's okay. Like, it's completely fine, again, to learn new tasks. I mean, look, you've done it, obviously, with so many things that you're doing. And, you know, I couldn't tell you the first thing about real estate. I still don't know anything about real estate. Like, it's just, it's like bizarre to me. But, like, I can ask people like you, and that's okay. Like, that's how you learn stuff, right? And that's part of the growth of not just us as doctors, but as mm -hmm. people. I mean, what was the very first business that you actually started, and, and how did that go? So I actually joined a biotech when I was in med school. And there's a long story there. It's kind of a sore spot. Um, essentially, we helped like build a delivery system for like medications, but also like um, skin ingredients, things like that. Um, I learned very quickly about how valuation works and how you don't get much valuation if you don't start the company and all this stuff. And it was, you know, I didn't end up, it didn't end up really going anywhere, but it was like, I learned, like I actually I started reading like business books. Like I would I call my MBA friends, like, hey, what books are you guys reading? I would just read them, like just, and um you know the company itself didn't really go anywhere but it kind of laid the foundation for all the steps i was going to take and then i started a in med school or sorry in residency i started something called health digital which was a hybrid venture tech um, digital platform to build tech companies and the same thing it did it ended up doing pretty well because it became my own companies that i just built up whatever i felt like building but you know there was a lot of learning experiences there how to build other people's projects like you know, the people who like trying to figure out who was going to do well and who did it. And it was actually very simple. The people who did well 
were committed. Like they weren't one foot in, one foot out. They were like, look, I'm going to succeed one way or the other. We're going to do this thing together. I may have to take one step back and make two steps forward, right? But I'll do it. And you can kind of read people pretty quickly based on their enthusiasm and also the ability to take criticism, right? Like I have, as a doctor, and I think all of us are the same way, like I have trouble sometimes taking criticism. So I'm like, don't know, like, I'm right. Like I, I, can, I think I'm right, you know? And then you're like, wait, am I right? And so with entrepreneurship, you have to be able to kind of roll with things. You have to evolve with things. And like, okay, look, this might be not the right way to go to market, but maybe this could work mm-hmm. and this. And like, again, with SM, I like to bring that up because it's a, become such a transformative company, um, at least in our field. It's like nobody would have, like the number one thing people ask, like how did you get all these dermatologists to you know, support it? And I'm like, it's just an honest answer, like a good answer, I think, to a very simple problem, right? And people are so... In fact, you're building all these complex solutions to problems that we don't even have. Like I can't even prescribe generic like acne meds to my patients that don't cost 600 bucks with insurance or some these days, you know, like some or some insurance, excuse me. So like I need something that's like 20 or $30 that I can prescribe. And then compounding, I mean, there, people have their thoughts on it, but compounding really just lets you personalize things. I, I, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the future of medicine, you know, on a macro level, and micro, maybe not, you know, again, the first or second step that we need to take, but at some point, personalized medicine is what we're all going to be looking for. Mm. I mean, you mentioned that, you know, even you, you felt, you know, there's some fear there, you know, of like, you know, starting into this field into, I guess, assuming that you would have some missteps or some failures along the way. Like, what did it take for you to ultimately get past those things to, you know, ultimately launch a lot of the companies that you made today? Honestly, I think it was the, you get nervous about, I mean, so there, okay, so I'll take a step back what are like the big barriers that we have, right? Number mm-hmm. one, obviously is our own kind of insecurity. We're nervous, like we're, we're used to performing at a high level, right? What happens if we don't? It's fear, right? And in medicine, again, everything's laid out for you. You know that you go to med school, you take certain classes to get there. You have residency, you might do a fellowship, and then you're like, then you go into practice, whether it's academic or private, and you just take your steps. What if there's no plan in front of you, right? Like, so that anxiety is barrier one. Uh, the second one is, you know, and I'm just gonna say this right, like right now, entrepreneurship is lonely. And you worry about people criticize. I, I got criticized so much, like, and it's crazy because I've never met half these people. And they're like, "Oh, he's doing it for money. He's doing it for this." Even in my office, um, I was one of the youngest people to open up a private office in New York City. And like the people I looked up to most, like, it got, kind of got back to me. They're like, "Who does this kid think he is? Like, you know, he's New York. Like, he needs to like earn his keep. So you can't open an office in New York. Where is he getting the money? Where is he doing this? All this, like, all these questions." And I took out a big loan with pretty much all my savings, so like I didn't have any money to do it, right? And so, you know. It's that fear of like what everybody else thinks that again, as doctors, we, we tend to hold a bit too close to the chest. Um, and I realize it doesn't matter. Like if you're a good person, you're doing the right thing. Like that's all you can really do. Right. And I like, it's funny, you know, like I said, it's funny because now people are like, you know, they'll have their opinions, but the good noise outweighs the bad noise always and forever. And, you know, for me, like the great privilege I have, at least as a dermatologist, is talking to colleagues about their pro- like their projects, their dreams, their things like that, right? And trying to like nurture them along too. And half the time, all I have to do is like push them to jump. Like, I don't know anything about their projects. Like, I, I don't know the first thing about what they're working on, but I'm like, jump, just like jump. And so that was, you know, for me that like fear of what everybody else thinks, fear of not knowing it, like that's what I think for me was very, I had to get over myself. And, mm. you know, that's why I can, I can talk about it freely, but I, I had like anxiety when I was doing these things. I couldn't sleep at night. I was like, you know, so worried, you know, what are my friends think, what are my parents think, what if I fail? Like, what if I lose all my money? Um, but that's, you know, you, you know, it's like, if you don't swing, you can't, you know, you can't hit a home run. So you got to mm-hmm. do something. I mean, now that you're around so many entrepreneurs and you probably see other physicians kind of coming up in this space, starting businesses, but a lot of people that are watching this aren't connected to that world. They don't see that. So what do you see as potential for physicians to get into entrepreneurship, take on big ventures, you know, just uh, take big swings, change the world. Like what is the potential for physicians to do that? So there's a couple of things. Um, one is I would just reach out. You have to reach out to people, right? And like I get yelled at all the time because I get a lot of emails, but I try my best to respond, I promise you. Like sometimes you get a lot. <laughs> and, but I, be persistent, right? Like follow up with the email. Like it's, sometimes you miss emails. I'm sure you get it too. Just miss emails. Like it, there's so many that come in um, for just work stuff, not even like our you know other stuff. Mm-hmm. And so um, be persistent join companies, like be advisors on companies. So, you know, we had talked about this previously, like I, I need more doctors to do more entrepreneurial things, not because I want, you know, like on a personal level, anything. I just think healthcare is better off if we're at the driver's seat or at least part of that conversation. You know, I'm not naive to, like, to the fact or like you need business 
minds and money perhaps to scale things. Like I get that. And I, you know, but choosing the right money, choosing the right business people around you, there should be an ethical voice there in any company, right? Especially with like digital medicine kind of becoming the norm now. Like I want doctors to be involved. And again, like you don't have to be CEO. You don't have to be anything. You can be just a, a outside advisor or you can be a the chief medical officer, right? But mm -hmm reach out to the company see how you can get involved and don't worry about the money like the money comes right and sometimes the experience is way more valuable than money i did so much work for free for so long i learned so much like even that first day you know, i guess at the first medical school kind of quote unquote failure um i didn't get any money from it but i learned more than i would ever be able to repay anyone right and so i think you have to kind of put yourself out there and figure it out and i think again like watching webinars and, and conferences like you put on um, communicate. I, mean, I think Facebook is cool because you can like build communities where people just talk and be like, Hey, like I need help with this, or I'm looking for advisors for this, or, um, even for us mm -hmm. on my, on my air platform, I'm, I'm in the process of creating like almost like a message board where we don't get anything for it, but I just want like, so-and-so is looking for this advisor, this, and like, I just, I want to put it out there because the more people that are doing this, the, that means the less people who don't have our best, you know, our best intentions and our, our patient's best um, kind of tensions at heart, like it, it, it's kind of swaying it back towards the medical led everything. And again, that being said, like, I'm not saying it's bad to have the other people, it's just you should be among them. Hmm. I mean, what does it mean for people when they're watching this, they, you know, they hear the concept of being an advisor, it sounds great. Like what is, what does that entail? And so people know, so it's clear to them, maybe they can figure out how they can get involved. I mean, it's, it's what you make it, right? And that's part of the negotiations when you're coming in. Some people might want you for half hour a month some people are half hour every four months it depends some people want you every day and then i would probably ask for a little bit more than just the you know, basic advisorship but um the other thing i would just kind of encourage is know your worth too so i you know i don't want to contradict myself but in the beginning if it's free and stuff that's fine as you mature through your career like mm -hmm. it's okay to ask for a little bit more especially if you're doing advisor pharma companies because they have a few bucks and they'll try to like knock you out a couple hundred bucks an hour but they spend more on coffee at these meetings so you know, it's one of those things where, you know, given the situation, like also know your worth. But, you know, when it comes to like, if it's a small startup just started, you know, exchange equity for instead of money, right? Like for my health digital, how we did like initially, I didn't have any money. I wanted to be a venture capitalist. So what we did is I found a developer who had like a whole development firm. I'm like, how much does it cost you per hour to build apps? And let's say it's like $5 an hour. Kind of, we're just making up a number. I'm like, that's your break even, right? And I'm like, what do you charge people? He's like, well, I double it up to so $20 an hour, whatever it is. And I'm like, cool. So how about let's charge like 11 or $12 an hour. So you get a little extra and you have a little buffer, but let's take equity. So you don't charge that last $8. Right. And by the way, it costs more than $20 an hour to build an app. But, um, but that was the example we took. So I wasn't making any money. He was making enough to cover his costs plus a little extra, but not much. And then we were taking equity. So that way we were able to work with lean startups, help them build without them breaking the bank. Essentially they're paying at cost. And we were able to take equity in companies that have started to grow. And, you know, some of those are still in the process. Who knows if that'll turn into anything. But mm -hmm. it's just kind of a cool mindset, I think, in terms of, like, not chasing every bottom dollar, but still getting something for your time, which is, you know, obviously, it's the ideal situation. Hmm. I mean, you've talked about the, the want, the desire that you have for physicians and the need, I'd say. But mm -hmm. what, what about on the other side for physicians? Do you think how important is it for them to get involved in these type of things, especially with the state of medicine as it is today? kind of where we're yeah. going, how important is it for them to venture off and, and try different things? Yeah, I think it's one of those, you know, I feel like I'm worried about where medicine is going, the less control we have with things. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, a lot of this is if we don't do it, then what happens kind of deal, right? And I think for physicians, like we have to push a little bit more than we're otherwise comfortable doing because I think we saw with COVID, like, we're necessary in this whole battle. Like you can't replace doctors. Uh, but we've also seen with over the last few years that the, what defines a doctor has also changed dramatically, right? And so we need to be at the forefront advocating, being again on these platforms, being sure that you know patients get adequate care um, from physicians to the best of our ability. Uh, mm. Hope that's a good way of answering the question. No, no, I, I think it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, for you, like when people see where you're at today, I mean, they're like, oh my God, he's done so many of these amazing things. You mentioned a little bit about the fear when you first started, but what were some of the other big challenges that you might share with people, maybe some of the mistakes you made that uh, someone might learn from? So, I mean, money was obviously a thing. I didn't have any money, um, honestly, but like this was my mindset. So let's say it cost $50,000 to build an app or even $100,000 to build an app. 
Um, the best advice I ever got is how much does it cost to open a pizza? Hut? You know, like probably cost more, right? And so if you think an app will make you tens of millions of dollars or a million dollars, right? Is a hundred thousand dollars a lot of money? And the question is, it starts switching up your priorities in terms of like where you're. The like guy was living very lean my early years out of residency. I was saving everything in my residency. I actually use all my residency money pretty much to start health digital because um, I didn't have any money. And so you know how you succeed is based on how much you want things. Um, you know, and again, I feel like that is something that it's a mind shift. Like it, it just changes if you. Every paycheck, you're putting aside a certain amount of money, a thousand bucks a month, whatever it is, five hundred bucks a month, and over time it's going to become something. That might be your seed money to go build something, right? And I think like these are lessons that I had to learn myself because I was so scared about money, uh, not having it, and what do I do? If, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, if you if you don't if you can't fail, you won't fail, right? Like just mm. in my head, I can't fail. I'm not like I you know I'll have nothing, so I have to succeed. And then that's how you kind of get pushed through all those blocks and things that occur. I mean, I, I love it. And, and people see you doing all these things and I've seen you now do this. And I'm like, how does someone like this run a successful practice, do all these ventures, you know, do all these startups? Um, how, how are you able to juggle all of these things for people that are wondering? So it's a good question. I actually talked about this with somebody yesterday. Um, one of the best things I've learned as a practice owner is overpay good talent. And I think that's, a, that's on tech also. I think everything in life, right? Um, you know, for me, I, at some point, I was very lean about costs, and if I probably lost more money than I ever realized. Um, I overpaid for my, you know, whatever market was for my last office manager, but she helps me with my projects, my office, like everything. And it's made my life so much easier. So I like our job on the tech side should always be thirty thousand feet. Like we're not like operating. If you can do it, amazing. But like, we're it's hard for us to have that brain capacity to operate a very like you know, microscopic level that you need with a lot of this stuff. So you need somebody to do it for you. But we also can see the matrix. Right? As doctors, we see like the patient side, the doctor side, perhaps the business side, mm. me less than most, but like perhaps. And our goal should be leading that ship kind of, kind of where it's supposed to be. And so with my office, I'm the same way. I'm like, look, I don't, I don't look at our numbers coming in every month. I don't, my job is not, I'm like, are we doing well? They're like, we're doing well. Um, my job is to build, you know, an atmosphere that, as everybody succeed, right? And our office grew from, I couldn't, you know, beg anybody to come in to, I think I have like a year plus wait list to see me personally right now, something crazy. And it was based on like, just a mind shift, of like, okay, like, let me just do what I'm good at. Let other people do what they're good at. And I'll, mm. I'm gonna figure it out. Cause even like social media, like we, you know, again, we've talked about social, like it's a job. I mean, honestly, like people dismiss social media and they roll their eyes, but you know, I could do one Instagram post and get like 200 people in a day reaching out to our office for an appointment. Um, and like, you know, I, it's weird if you think about it, it's like very bizarre and we live in a bizarre world, but even at the glory days of like the yellow pages, when would that ever happen? Right. Do I put a billboard up? Am I going to get 200 people? No, like it's not going to happen. So we have, it's like, it's, it's a real, like it's a superpower to be able to use that stuff and cultivate it for good. Um, but again, I think we sometimes dismiss things because we're not comfortable with them and they're not like native to us. And we feel like we shouldn't be doing it, but like use it for good. I mean, my social is all educational. Like I don't really do, for, I don't like, I rarely mention the cosmetics we do. Like I don't really want to. So, you know, if I do it's educational only, I'm like, oh, this is a procedure. This mm -hmm. is like what it is. But I'm not like, hey, come in, buy one, get one free. Or like, yeah. you know, I don't do any of that stuff. So it just, we try to keep it like my personality, but like, you know, and I know it's challenging. I know a lot of people probably watching this are like, social like Jesus Christ like I hate, I hate that stuff and I, I I am not a big fan of social media honestly it's just it's part of our job so we do our best to embrace it mm. I mean something I have to ask now that now that you're at this point where you're at like how does it feel to be here right how does it feel to do all these things and have your you know clinical side still as well and have all these ventures going on at the same time like yeah I mean what goes through your head um thank you that's a very good question I mean honestly it just it, there's gratitude for sure I mean mm -hmm my general days are crazy. Um, I wish I could share them with people, but they're so NDA to death, some of the things that we do, but um, it's bizarre, but I get to go like to an office. I get to treat people I care about, right? With people I care about, which is just as important. Um, I might slip in two or three procedures, then move into a tech meeting or a skincare meeting. We, you know, again, we have some fun celebrities that we're friends with and, we get to, and you get to learn that side of stuff. I'm super grateful, but um, I can't say that I don't feel guilty also because it's a lonely process, right? And you're like, 
it's like it's like it's almost one of those things like if you chase a carrot and you catch the carrot like what do you do kind of deal right and i don't know if i've caught a carrot per se but i'm living a life that i'd hope to live where i have you know diversity and options and i'm able to do things that i would have never dreamt of but part of you is like i need more people to also feel like so you see like physician burnout and all these things and it eats at you a little bit because you're like you're in the like you're in the system you're not happy like like okay let's let's like work to figure out how we can make you happy right and you know i don't know that's why again i like i honestly don't do many conferences or any any of that stuff i like i like this because my hope is that there are people out there this stuff are like i need to be happy and happiness is okay as a doctor and we're gonna we're, we're brainwashed into like don't worry about you it's about everybody else but like you need to be happy to succeed in life right mm-hmm. and to care for your patients and so I think about that stuff a lot. You know, is it a lonely journey? Yes. Is it a rewarding journey? Yes. Um, am I thankful? Yes. Um, do I get sad sometimes? Yes. Because like, again, you like, you want to be able to share these things with colleagues and friends and, you know, the doctors in my office all know, like every one of them, I, I sit them down, like, okay, five years from now, what are you doing in life? What do you want to do tomorrow that you aren't doing today? How can we build that into your schedule, into your structure, right? Like we're doing like one of our doctors is doing this, uh, big skincare launch now with uh, with another celebrity and we like it wasn't my position to to put that flame out it was to nurture it right mm-hmm. and so i was there i do my thing i help on the back end i'm like this is your baby like you do this I'm like i don't i don't i don't want it like, you need to be happy and i remember we talked recently because she could come from academics and she's like look i am thankful like this i'm happy this is the happiest i've ever been in my life like i love coming to work you know whether she was just saying that who knows but i you know i i like that's what you think about, and when you get to the position, you just think about like all you know, a all the people who helped you get there. But you're always again, gratitude is very important. I try my best to to share that, and then two, like how do I get others to kind of come into this world? Because I don't know what success is. People always ask that question. I don't know if this is success. I don't think it is. I think success is just living your day every day on your terms. Like that's my personal mm. belief of it. It's not monetary. It's not you know fame or media or press or like any of that nonsense, right? Like it's just you're happy, you have a lovely family that you can go home to, you can take a break if you take a break, you go to work with a smile on your face, you love your patients, like that I think is success. And trying to figure out like, how do I, you know, A, get, make sure my world has balance and B, have other people kind of, you know, take that leap so that hopefully they can be in the same position. And again, many people are and I'm happy for them, but those who are not, you know, there is like, that's what your platform I think really helps people kind of work towards. Well, I mean, I love everything you said. I know that people are going to hear this. They're going to want to connect with you, find out more about you, maybe even hear of some opportunities, whatever it is. Um, Where's the best place for people to do that? Um, So my email is um, Dr. Bonasalia, Bonasalia MD. Um, That's my personal email. Email me. Like I said, please follow up if I miss it. I I don't (laughs) want to. The at Dr. Bonasalia is my Instagram and social. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, we, we had previously discussed like, even for me, um, you know, even for SM, like we're thinking about like, okay, we solve a derm problem. Maybe pain or opto might be next because I think from my patients and my colleagues that there's issues there with affordability of medications. So I don't know anything about either of those fields. I'm going to be very frank with you. But if there are people out there who listen to this, who are like, hey, I would love to help. Like, again, I, my job is to bring people together and to, to build, you know, to make this a bigger um, project and by us, you know, like kind of deal. So um, if anybody wants to help, I'm happy to figure out how to, bring you on board and do all that stuff. But generally speaking, even if it's not for that, I just, you know, my, again, my job and duty, much like yours is just to like encourage people to do their thing and to be happy, honestly. And so if I can help in any small way, I'm happy to do my best to try. Awesome. I love it. I highly recommend if anybody's interested, find out, talk to Dr. Bonasale, that was super approachable, great guy. And obviously he does amazing things. Um, Before I let you go though, I want to make sure I get a big tip from you. Or someone wants to follow in your footsteps. You got one for me? Uh, a big tip. Um, 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 um. Any tip. <laughs> I think it's just to jump. Like, just jump. Honestly, like, it, you're going to think of 8 billion reasons not to do something. I think if you, um, if you jump, mm. you'll figure it out. You're more equipped than you realize. You're more powerful than you realize. So you'll be fine. Perfect. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, spending your time with us. Obviously, you do amazing stuff. Every time I talk to you, you're evolving, you're doing new things. And it's been fun to watch your journey just from afar. Um, you know, obviously, you're doing amazing work. And just congrats on all you're doing. You know, hopefully next time we talk to you, we'll talk about even some new stuff. And uh, yeah, keep up the amazing work. Let's talk again soon. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it.
<laughs> All right, thanks. You just start by starting. You just, you get the train on the tracks, but once you get that train in motion, it kind of takes on a life of its own. I felt like there was more inside me, like I had creativity, I had energy, I had passion, enthusiasm, and I wanted to funnel that into something bigger. Decisions move you forward. So just make that next decision, take that next step. You'll either succeed or you'll learn the lesson you needed. Look at the new skills I've developed. Look at all the times I was scared, but I did something anyway. Look at all the challenges I've dealt with that I now feel very confident I can deal with something even bigger. You can take these big leaps, but don't take it blind. Like, like at least know what you're getting into. Like kind of try to create a map and understand your risks, just like you would do with any other decision in medicine. The thing that a lot of doctors don't understand or don't realize is that there's a lot of skills that are transferable. How we're able to survive medical school, residency, attending life, there's almost a direct crossover and many of the best entrepreneurs I've seen have a professional background. The biggest thing is kind of figuring out what's important to you in your life and only one person can really answer that and that's, that's you.